Hey guys, in this video, you'll find out what I consider to be the racket of the year and as of this moment, my number one contender to a potential switch over my Gravity Pro. Previously, I talked about what I looked for in a switch and in this one, I'll tell you about what I like about the racket that matches what I'm looking for and whilst it's not perfect in every category, it certainly does tick a lot of the boxes. Now bear in mind, at this stage, it's only a consideration but a very high one at that. But don't be surprised that I stick with the Gravity Pro with a new one coming out next year but this is possibly the closest I've come to considering a floor switch. Before we start the video, if you liked the video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more reviews. Or if you want to support the channel, you can buy me a coffee or give me a super thanks. Follow me on Instagram for more updates. Let's move on to the specs. The racket comes in at 98 square inches. It comes in about 305 grams unstrung with strings added 323 grams strung. It has a constant beam of 22.5 millimeters with a balance of 33.32 centimeters unstrung. The stiffness rating is 64 RA and is a foam filled racket for more comfort and the average swing weight comes in at around 338. Now if you're one of the many few that guessed the Extreme Tour in my last video, well sorry to say, this is not it. The racket I'm actually referring to is the Technofiber T-Fight ISO 305 that comes with a unique string pattern of 18 by 19. The funny thing with this racket is that reading off the spec sheet at first, I would have never bothered to test this out, but luckily a friend of mine switched over to this racket and let me borrow his. And if it wasn't for that, I would have completely just discounted the frame due to the specs alone, but it actually just does things that really don't match your expectations if you just read the piece of paper. So for string setups and modifications, I've tried a few so far but I still think I'm looking for the right one, so check out the overlay to see what I've used so far. I don't think you need to modify your default tension, but if you want a bit more pop I'd say you could drop the tension by 2 to 3 pounds to give you some extra help. With the swing weight so high in stock form, I ventured out to find one that was under spec, similar like I did with the Gravity Pro, and I got one that came in at 330 swing weight, but I'll let you know more about that later. With design, funny enough, are the biggest cons to the racket which I'll get out of the way first. Technofiber for some reason opts in to use a more classical head grip shape like the old Prestiges and it's one of the things I absolutely cannot gel with with the Technofiber rackets. It has a more rectangular and lengthened bevel at the top and bottom sides of the handle where the strings face outwards and makes me lose my forehand grip position forcing me to use what feels like a slightly altered forehand grip that does tend to throw me off on occasion. To counter this I have used the smallest grip size possible where the grip shape does not protrude as much and is not as noticeable and I also use a very thin replacement grip as well. The replacement grip that comes in the stock is too squishy for me, my hand sinks in way too much, so I either re-wrap the replacement grip by stretching it out and tightening it up, or at the moment I've also used a Kimoni leather grip, which is a leather grip that weighs in at about only 11 grams, so it won't add any weight but will still give you a defined feel. I'm heavily considering hacking off the foam base palette and replacing it with a custom 3D printed head TK82S palette, the same as the most modern head rackets today. Secondly, I really think that Technofiber needs to add a trapdoor to their butt cap design which would make things more convenient overall. But one thing I do actually like about the design that they've had with the T-Fight models is the tie-off grommets which really protect the frame when you're tying off the knots which is a big plus in my opinion. For feel and stiffness, now I never tried the T-Fight RS305, mainly because the stiffness rating seems to be too high, so my assumption is that this one should be a lot more comfortable overall. Most string setups did feel reasonably comfortable and I did not have any problems with the stiffness generally at all, and the racket doesn't really provide much flex or sensation that it moves very much upon impact, but there is a slight amount of ball pocketing with the softer string setup, the more pocketing you'll notice. Generally, it does travel off the string bed quite fast, but not as fast as the E-Zone, and definitely not as much dwell time as the Gravity Pro. For power with this kind of beam thickness and swing weight, it does provide you with a lot of power potential, but at the end of the day, it'll come down to how fast you can swing this racket. I would say it gives off more power than you would find in the E-Zone, Regnos, Speed MP, and Extreme Tour, and borders closer to something like the Selenko Whiteout, the V-Core 98, and the Aero VS. This is definitely a racket that's made for advanced players with fully developed technique for you to get the most out of it. Due to the swing weight and balance of this racket, I feel far more in control of power shots with full-fledged swing 
swings and it makes it a lot more difficult to flick the wrist on certain shot types, particularly on low bouncing approach shots or when defending deep shots that bounce at your feet. The biggest difficulty I have is accelerating in short spaces or trying to slap the ball. And these are two of my best shots and is the only thing that makes me question the switch as they are very important shots in my arsenal that get me out of a lot of situations. But I also think spending a lot more time on this racket to get used to the specs giving my arm and body time to adapt to may allow me to get used to it enough where I can find a way to make it work. So for me, I feel like if you want to generate reliable and accurate power in this racket, I think it's best that you try to build up good momentum by preparing your swing as early as you can with a full take back without cheating the backswing before you can crash into the ball. And that way I feel like you'll maximize your power and control and doing this properly, you will be rewarded with massive power and spin. For maneuverability, typically I'm used to more headlight rackets, ideally no less than 6 points headlight. But this racket comes in currently in the specs that I'm playing with at about 3 points head heavy. And for any racket that I've ever customized to a head heavy balance, I have always had an extremely hard time swinging at the ball. Let alone one with a swing weight that is this high for me, as my frames usually do not exceed 330. But because this racket's static weight is still in a usable range at 330 grams strung, it still allows you some room for surprisingly good maneuverability. Although it does feel a little heavy in the hand sometimes in certain situations, situations, its aerodynamics are extremely good and you can tell immediately by shadow swinging that it feels a lot faster than you would expect. Now as I mentioned in the power category, there are certain situations where the swing weight and balance do come back to bite you and for me it's only those situations on the forehand where I can get caught late. But the biggest pro on this racket is that for whatever reason the one hander is excellent. It swings extremely fast, there is no air drag at all, it gives you all the power, spin and stability as well as aerodynamics that you want for a one hander, creating a really odd but amazing feet. The other weird thing is that the first time I tried this racket it had a 338 swing weight and I thought perhaps buying an under spec one of 330 making it less head heavy as well as a lower swing weight would help with the course. But for some reason it seems to move faster with the additional 8 points of swing weight in stock form so I actually do add that weight back on despite having an under spec version. I do feel that if you have a forehand star that begins with the tip of the racket facing upwards you might have a bit more trouble with the maneuverability as I think that seems to get a bit more air drag than if you are someone with a forehand that has the tip facing down or forwards as it seems to cut through the air a lot better with that kind of style. The biggest question mark to me is whether or not this racket was completely intended to be this balance and swing weight only or will the alternate weighted models play just as good with a more headlight balance and lower swing weight. And this is the question that would intrigue me the most to give these other models a try when they eventually release them. Now for control, this is where I think the racket may be the most string or tension sensitive. I would try to use a string that's a bit more on the control side, but still comfortable if you can find one. There's certainly a lot of spin control for deep and short angles, but the 1819 pattern also allows you to flatten out balls for tighter targeting, opening your game up to complete versatility. I'd say it's not as much of a relentless attacking racket like the Gravity Pro is, and slightly more of an all-court frame that allows for many instances to take aggressive control of a rally with the spin or pace but plenty of stability to block bigger serves or point and redirect shots when you're out of time. It doesn't feel as confidence inspiring as my gravity as the gravity plays slightly more dead but allows you to completely swing out and maintain full control but whilst it's not as accurate in nature it's compensated with other pros such as how good the one-hander can be. Now I'm still experimenting with the string setups and I feel like some of the hybrid strings like Head Links Touch and Ghost Wire end up making the racket launch and spray a lot when you're not careful but it could be due to the tension drop given the spin potential but soon I'll be trying out more of control poly and seeing how it stacks up if I can find just as much comfort but more predictability. Now for spin I have to say this racket gives possibly some of the most spin I've ever seen come from any racket that's not marketed as a spin racket. 
that spin potential is definitely more than the 2021 Vehicle 98, more annoying than the Extreme Tour due to the power potential and quite possibly close to the Aero VS. Except with the massive swing weight it penetrates the court harder and can make it very difficult to play against. And don't forget this racket is only a 98 square inch and also has an 18, 19 string pattern so I don't quite understand where it's generating all this spin potential from but it is crazy and it is good. And you're still able to get this spin without using a heavily sharp or shaped string or just bite into the ball and shoots off with a much higher launch angle than you would expect to see from this kind of string pattern. Now for serve, I think serving is highly dependent on your swing style. I think if you prefer to use your body momentum and weight transfer, you might find this racket a bit hard to get around on the serve. But I believe that if you're someone who's able to generate a lot of hand speed, you'll enjoy this racket a lot for serving. And you can still see that I can still generate quite a lot of pace. As despite the specs that we've discussed, it can cut through the air very well, use its swing weight and aerodynamics to generate a huge flat serve, but maintain control with the 1890 string pattern. And it has that balance and feel where it doesn't pocket the ball insanely but also is not so fast off the racket that you can't control it as best as you can and also with the spin potential it has it, it generates an insane kick serve if you really swing through it and this came naturally without the practice The slice is generally reliable, it's consistent and stable and allows you to really cut in with a ton of free side spin. I found it offered a lot of stability on the return and on the stretch recovery slices were easy to get around as well. Unlike the frames that are usually the best at slicing that are traditionally more flexible, highly dense string patterns with a higher static weight. For stability as you would expect the overall stability is quite solid. I thought it was very consistent on blocking returns more than usual and it gave me that extra bit of confidence to direct the ball and the return where I want it. And definitely enough here to redirect shots without having to swing too much on higher pace rally balls. But as of this stage it does seem that the specs in stock form are intentionally designed to match its playability being that getting a lighter version under spec did not seem to do it much justice where it still twisted a lot on off center shots and on some of my power shots that it just didn't plow through the ball and seemed to end up slipping from its position more than I'd expect it to. So whilst overall a pretty solid racket it doesn't seem to match something like the Blade Pro and I also felt that the E-Zone Tour was more stable with the same swing weight, static weight and a more headlight balance. For forgiveness, the forgiveness levels are pretty standard. There are certainly some areas of the string bed that seem to make the racket twist a lot more on off center shots, particularly I think on the upper string bed, I think seems to really make the racket shank despite the swing weight. But it's generally not something that bothers you too much if you're used to playing with 98s. The thing that is most likely going to throw you off is the swing weight and balance, where I'm guessing most players who try this racket may end up just hating it because it's out of the, their usual spec range. That is going to suit a more particular type of swing path and player with a certain level of strength and skill. For volleys, volleys have that perfect balance of feel that I prefer at the net, where I personally like to have a bit of pocketing for touch shots, but still enough of a direct response where you can really stick a volley. That surprising maneuverability also does transfer its weight to the net, making it feel quite fast to handle at a low static weight, but it has a little bit of help on stability backed up with a higher swing weight. But with that said, the static weight can still be noticeable with the faster paced shots when you're trying to block them on badly timed volleys, so there is a slight weakness for the stability when it comes to the net, because the low static weight is not enough to help you in this regard. So who is this racket for? The specs are intended for a very seasoned player who has great fundamentals within the technique that have high racket head speed and someone who is strong enough to handle the swing weight. Ideally someone who is going to get the most out of this racket would be a high level 4-5 nearing 5-0 or around UTR 8 and above. The play style that the racket suits is an all court player for someone who likes to dominate from the baseline but also someone who likes to come forward and take advantage of the opponent's weaker balls. There is possibility to counter punch using its swing weight where you can block and redirect but I think you would most likely want to take advantage of that penetrating spin and the huge serve.
My final thoughts, for someone who hasn't played with any of the T-Fight RS models but having previously owned some of the TF40s and the XTC T-Fight 305, in my opinion is so far the best Technofiber model that I've used to date, even beating out some of my other competing rackets for a potential switch. My two biggest contenders at this stage for a switch is definitely the T-Fight ISO but also the Strike VS due to its extreme ease of use. With new rackets coming out next year it will be interesting to see what else pops up on the radar, it's just that I still have not strayed away from my Gravity Pro and the T-Fight is most certainly next on the radar for that experimentation. This racket just seems to do so many things well at a high level with its only downside being that maneuverability in certain situations but it is a hell of a racket for those who can handle the specs. That concludes my review and what I consider to be the racket of the year and if you end up trying this racket please let me know how you go in the comments below. Also a huge shout out to everyone who supported the channel, I've just reached 5000 subscribers so really appreciate everyone who has supported the channel, especially those who have provided a super thanks and bought me a coffee. I still have quite a bit of footage to do on the next couple of reviews that I'll try to release as soon as I can. So thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time.